So one of the most common questions about mid journey and creating images in mid journey is, can I create images that look like photos? meaning photorealistic images. And I saw Matt Wolf did an incredible video on it. So I kind of chased down the prompts that he was showing and the places he got them from. And I thought I'm going to make a video as well and I'm going to test it for myself. So let me switch my screen and test it together. So the consensus is that in order to get photorealistic images in mid journey, you should be using terminology from photography. And I went and dug around a little bit and looked at the best lenses for different types of photography, the best f-stops. I also had a look at the camera brands or specific words that photographers use. And I have chosen three different types of photography that we're going to try. And I have chosen a portrait of a person, a landscape, image and wildlife. And what I found is in order to have a really, really good photograph of a person, a portrait, you need to use an 85 millimeter lens. This is the best lens to use. And the f-stop is between 1.8. Here we go. 1.8 and 2.8. Now, one thing I did not find um, and there's nothing out there that tells me which camera exactly is the best. I decided to swap between Nikon and Canon. Um, I don't think it will make any difference. Um, it is just going to be a camera. So what I've chosen for my first test for the, uh, of a photograph of a person for a portrait is a portrait of a beautiful woman dressed in a blood red dress, highly detailed, smooth. Now, the reason I've chosen highly detailed is because we're using a human face and I want Mid Journey to create a um, really good and detailed uh, photograph. Uh, one thing that I see a lot of people do is they would put like everything that has the word detailed in it, like highly detailed, ultra detailed, super detailed and detailed. And there's absolutely no point of doing that. Like you've told me journey once that you wanted to be detailed. Um, I've used the word smooth because I have found if I use the word smooth, mid journey will try and remove blemishes from the skin, which is really, really good when you're working with people. And I have chosen the, the recommended lens, which is 85 millimeters at f2.8 stop. So the uh, smallest one, the smaller one and shot on Nikon camera. So I'm going to copy this prompt and paste it into mid journey. And I am also going to make it vertical. When you're creating portraits specifically, uh, it's probably best to make them vertical unless you are creating an image that you will be using for something else. So for example, if you're going to use it in graphic design for YouTube thumbnail or anything that needs to be white, then yes, of course, make it white, make, make it 16 by nine. But in my case, I'm just going to make it as a proper portrait photo. And I am going to let it run. While it's running, let's have a look at the next test that we're going to do. So the next one will be landscape. And with landscape photography, the best lens is 35 millimeters. And the best f-stops are between f16 and f22. Now, the other thing that they um, that landscape photographers use is the time of day, which is um, usually they shoot during the golden hour, which is the late afternoon when the sun is low and the temperature is very, very warm. So you get this uh, warm um, yellow, orangey glow around. And the other word that is specific for landscape photography is white angle. So I'm going to use that in my prompt as well. 
And what I've chosen for my prompt is landscape photograph of a tropical beach. Then I've put lagoon, coconut palms, white sand. Um, I've chosen the recommended lens, which is 35 millimeters. And I've chosen um, f22 as my uh, f-stop shot on Canon. And I'm going to change this to the golden hour and we'll see what that comes up with and wide angle. So I'm going to copy this. And before we start testing, let's have a look at our women. They look beautiful, all of them, especially number one and number four look very, very realistic very realistic um number two and number three are not too bad but i just feel that like number one is definitely a glamour photo that can be on the cover of a magazine absolutely they're amazing same with number four same with number four i i, I like i'd be hard to tell if they're real or not if i didn't know that i've just created them in mid journey Okay, now let's try our next prompt. And we're going to test our landscape and we're going to make it wide. And I'm going to let it run. And while it's running, we're going to have a look at our third test, which is animal specifically wildlife photography. Now, one of the words that I found is very, very important to get really good and realistic images with wildlife is to use the word National Geographic. That sends a signal to me journey about the exact type of image you want. National Geographic is very widely known. Uh, we all know what type of photography they do, and so does Mid Journey. Okay, and for wildlife photography, the best camera, uh, the best lens is 50, 85 to 130 millimeters, and the best f stop is between 3.5 and 6. So, what I've chosen for my um, last test is a photograph of lions in the savannah highly detailed uh, and I've chosen the longer lens which is 130 millimeters at f 3.5 low camera angle this is another thing with uh, wildlife photography um, if you've seen wildlife photographers a lot of the times they're actually lying down on the grass and they're kind of shooting um, from from, uh, from their body up and that's how they take these really, really amazing shots of animals. So that's a low camera angle. I've chosen shot on Nikon. Uh, I've, again, I've chosen the golden hour. We, we can probably try it with something else um, later on. But um, just for now, I've chosen the golden hour. And again, I've chosen the keyword, which is National Geographic. I'm going to copy that. And then we're going to have a look at our landscape oh my god the fourth one is amazing absolutely amazing let me open it here um as you can see this number four is beautiful beautiful um i like number two i'm not very keen on number one it does look a bit weird but number two number four even number three um yeah i could go with number three as well it's a little bit um uh, overexposed um, on the side here <coughs> but yeah number three number two and number four specifically are great like really really great and let's do our last test which is our lions and again we are going to make this whitish and we're gonna let it run now, one thing while we're waiting, one thing I want to stress out is that it is not the number of words you're using to get good prompts. 
it's about choosing the right words for the right type of image. Because I have seen people that are making prompts of a thousand to fifteen hundred words, which is crazy. I'm not entirely sure why somebody would do that. To me, that's just um, silly because just about everyone I speak to says that after about 50 or 60 words, mid-journey doesn't even pay attention. So what is the point of just stitching words together to try and make something? It, it's about creating a, uh, a, a, a template that works every single time because you have chosen the right words. Like, um, I, I actually did go and did some research. That's why I'm using specific camera lens and specific f-stop. It's not because I saw that somebody else is doing it, basically. So, uh, be very, very mindful when you're building your prompts to uh, use the right words, rather using lots of words. Like when I mentioned before about detail, you don't have to tell me journey four or five times how detailed you want your photography to be. Now, I can see that it's a little bit slow at the moment, so I might pause the video for a second and I'll come back when it's ready. Okay, <laughs> it's ready. It did take a bit of time, seriously. It, take, it took almost five minutes to um, come back with the results. So let's have a look at our lions. Uh, our number four is terrible. It looks very, very weird, but number two is great. Number one, great again. Number three, uh, you probably tell that it's not really real, but it's okay. But number two is definitely great. And number one, I really, really like them. And they've got the golden hour and everything. Um, yeah, I can definitely get behind creating very, very good photorealistic images in mid-journey, but only by using specific words, specific words that, are, that come from photography and that are real. So guys, do your research and try it. So as you can see, you can actually create pretty good images that are so real looking that sometimes with a little bit of tweaking here and there, you can not tell the difference uh, between a real photograph and the things we just created very, very quickly. I did not even try to tweak those prompts. I just did them um, as very, very raw prompt. So let me know in the comments, do you have better prompts than me to create photorealistic images? Or have you tried something and it hasn't worked? And if you're brave enough, create some images and put some comments with links so we can all go and check them out. And in the meantime, happy prompting.